Be exalted in the earth. 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 In the name of Jesus, let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, the enemy is moving in the earth, but greater is your son Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let him be exalted. Let Christ be exalted through your people. In the name of Jesus, let Christ be exalted. Let Christ be exalted. Let Christ be exalted. Let no flesh glory, but let Christ be exalted. Let Christ be exalted over every mountain, over every hill. Let Christ be exalted in the name of Jesus. 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 There's only one king, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. There's only one Savior, and his name is Jesus. There's only one God, and his name is Jesus. Let him be exalted. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Above every religion. Above every religion. In the name of Jesus. Praise his name. 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 Let the enemy be torn down. Let the works of the enemy be torn down. Let the works of darkness be torn down. Jesus is the light of the world. Let the works of darkness be torn down. Let us not cooperate with darkness. Let us cooperate with light. Let the children of light come forth. Amen. Let the darkness in us be driven out in the name of Jesus. Let the darkness in us be driven out in the name of Jesus. Darkness in our spirit. Darkness in our soul. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, examine me. In the name of Jesus. Lord, examine me. In the name of Jesus. Examine me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Examine my heart. Examine my mind. Examine my way. Examine my words. Examine my thoughts. In the name of Jesus, examine me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let darkness be removed from me. For in you, Lord, your word says that is light and there is no darkness. Come on, pray with me for a minute. You said that in Christ there is light and there is no darkness at all. And if we be in Christ, then, Lord, as you are, so are we in this world. So, Lord, help us in the name of Jesus to align with light. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, blot out our transgression. Renew within us, O oh God, a right spirit so that the spirit of the living God can live inside of us and tabernacle within us. For you will not dwell in an unclean temple. In the name of Jesus, you will not set us, Lord, on a high place if we regard iniquity. In the name of Jesus, but as you are holy, you said, be ye holy in all manner of living, in conversation. In the name of Jesus, Lord, make me a sanctuary. Can you say it? Lord, make me a sanctuary. Lord, make me, say it with me, make me a sanctuary. Make me a sanctuary. Hallelujah. Make me a place where you can dwell, where you want a tabernacle, where you want a temple with me, where you want to abide with me. 
where you want to make an abode with me, where you want to rest with me, where you want to set up on me, where you want to live in me, where you want to walk in me, where you want to talk with me. And fellows, Lord, come on. Come to your temple suddenly when you want to. In the name of Jesus, I offer myself to you. I admit that I'm not perfect, but I won't use imperfection as an occasion to the flesh. I ask you to forgive me in the name of Jesus. Forgive me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say it with your mouth. In the name of Jesus. Say it with your mouth. In the name of Jesus. Say it with your mouth. In the name of Jesus, say it again. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, stretch forth your holy hand and touch me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I can't be holy unless you touch me. You got to keep touching me. You got to keep touching me. You got to keep touching me in the name of Jesus. Pour your oil on me. You got to keep touching me. You got to keep cleansing me in the name of Jesus. You said, hallelujah, if I confess my sins, you would forgive me. Lord, help me with this pride in my life so I will confess my sins in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and pray with me for a minute. You got to keep touching me. I have a habit of hiding my sins from you. I have a habit of lying in the presence of the Lord. I have a habit of not confessing my sins, Lord. Hallelujah. Keep touching me, Lord, so I'll keep confessing. Oh, God. Because when I confess, it, oh God, it deals with our pride. It deals with my pride in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The Bible says that if you confess your sins, he's just and faithful. But the enemy have made the saints, the children of God, that we don't confess like we need to. And what is need to? Not like your brother or sister, but to get more cleansing and more power. Because the God that sees all and knows all also sees the pride that says, I'm not going to confess, and I'll come into his presence with praise and worship. But I won't come or take the time to confess, to confess my sin. Somebody say, what sin? What have I done? That in itself is a prideful thought or statement. It says we don't understand the holiness of our Savior. That we're not worthy to come into his presence unless we come by the blood. Which has to cleanse all of our thoughts and all of our attitudes. The Bible says cleanse yourself from the flesh and the spirit. We don't do things in the flesh, but our spirits can be corrupt. Attitudes of the spirit. Jesus is not just our Savior, but he's also holy. He's just like God. He's spotless and he's holy. He's holy in everything that he does. And to approach him, we have to be holy. For 10 days, they praised and they prayed. And if you would let your mind be true to do that for 10 days, they didn't just come and sleep for 10 days. They got it all out. We're not going to do that today. 
But for 10 days, they done confession. He said, wait until power came. And I promise you, they were praying the Lord's Prayer, forgiving each other, one another, their debt to dealing with attitudes, dealing with uncleanness, dealing with word curses, dealing with thoughts, stuff that the enemy was planning over their head. I love what Michael Hicks said. He's no longer with us. But these things are not my thoughts. Things that we take ownership of that the enemy plants. For 10 days, they took your one-hour, two-hour prayer and put it on steroids, and they prayed it over and over again. The stuff we said I prayed about yesterday, they prayed it again just to be sure because they were so eager to get the Holy Spirit when it came that we should be that same eager about being baptized again and again. And if it takes 10 days, we boast about three or four or five days and come up with nothing. And we wonder why. Because somewhere we hide stuff. Somewhere we still got some kind of thing that we are holding that's keeping a cap on the lid that the Holy Spirit is saying, but I can't feel you because of that. Because it is the Lord's will to pour his spirit out on his people. It is his will to come in like a rushing mighty wind. Today is the day of Pentecost. And what heaven is doing and celebrating and wanting to do is invite everybody to the table to pour out his spirit, to continually do it, not as a form, as a fashion. And I'm not talking about glossolalia, but what heaven is wanting to do is to pour out his spirit on all flesh, but not just the people who are lost, but people who claim to know God. He cannot do it. You know why? Because they can't do the 10-day principle. And it's not that we need 10 days, but they can't do what was accomplished in 10 days. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1, you can turn the lights on. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. It says, and when the, the, the day of Pentecost was fully come, when it was fully come, when it had come completely, that meant they had completed all of their, Lord, forgive me for my attitude. Lord, forgive me for the things that I've said that I haven't repented of, the things that I did that I shouldn't have done, the things that I have not done. When it fully come, Pentecost was a feast that was to remind them to get ready for harvest. Pentecost was come, but many of God's people are not anywhere ready for harvest. The Holy Spirit is not going to fill somebody who doesn't even have a, a desire for harvest. Why would you give a pick and shovel to a man that don't intend to work? Let that play softly for me. Why would you give keys to somebody that don't intend to, to drive? Why would you give a skillet to somebody that don't intend to cook? Why would you give a book to somebody that don't intend to read it? Why would you give a pencil to anybody that don't intend to write? A computer to somebody that don't intend to use it? Why would God give the Holy Spirit to a person that don't intend to harvest? We see so much 
of what goes on in modern worship so dull and so powerless. And so what we do is we turn on the system. But if we would really wonder where the problem lies, the problem lies in that the Holy Spirit says, why would I give the Holy Spirit to a preacher, to a witness, to anybody that doesn't intend to use it outside of the four walls? Why would I give extra money to somebody that ain't going nowhere? I'm going to give you a dollar for lunch. And that's all I'm going to give you. Why am I going to give you extra money and you coming right back home? So why would I give extra power to people that don't intend to use it? So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, because they were fully ready to be used by God, fully ready to go, fully ready the Holy Spirit was not given so they could have great church services. It wasn't given so that they could testify in four walls. It wasn't given so they could sing with the choir. It wasn't given so they could preach in the room. It wasn't given so that they could testify to each other. They had to wait because they had to be fully persuaded within them own selves. The Holy Spirit had to know that they were really ready to do what God wanted to do with the Holy Spirit. We want the Holy Spirit today to do or to use it for what we, we want to use it for, to feel better to feel better, to get comfort in areas where really what we need to do is repent or to change. We want the Holy Spirit to help us so that we don't have to come up to the standards of what God requires us to come up to. Jesus is the example of what God wanted us to be. He wasn't the one to say, I'll do it for you. You just stay where you are. He was God's perfect man. And the Holy Spirit comes to make us another one of God's perfect people. Or the Bible wouldn't say, be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And that's what the Holy Spirit came to do. But I already hear us thinking, nobody's perfect. That's true. The natural man is imperfect, but the Holy Spirit is perfect. And until they came to the place where they were saying in their prayer, I want to be just like Jesus, and that's perfect, it never set up on them. And the reason why so many of us don't have the fullness of his power, and it only walks with us a little time, is because we are comfortable with being imperfect. He only comes at the times that you're willing to say, I don't want to be human. I want to be supernatural. He did not die to make natural people more natural. He died to make natural people supernatural. So when the day of Pentecost had fully come and they were all with one accord, he doesn't show up like we want him to show up because we have an issue in the 21st century with being on one accord. Being on one accord is the most difficult thing that we can do because we are free and we are we can say what we want and think what we want, and we are so opinionated. Being on one accord is how the Holy Spirit has decided, because you have chosen to be separate and equal, then I can't operate 
through you in power. So I'll leave you to your own devices. And so what we have chosen is that I'm going to hold on to my thoughts and my opinions and my expressions and forgetting that those opinions and those expressions carry power. They carry spiritual weight in the negative if they don't line up with God's word. The Holy Spirit says, you will never experience the fullness of my power because if you get 120 people in one place, you're going to have 120 opinions. Ten of them feet going to hurt. Twenty of them don't think we need to do it like this. Thirty of them want to know what we're waiting on. Five of them think they ought to be running the show. Six of them think eh, this is stupidity. That ain't what the word says. It don't take all of that. You're going to have 120 opinions. 12 of them, 80 of them, husbands is telling them, come home. 40 of them's wife is saying, who, who made them the leader? Somebody going to say, who, what made Peter think he running everything? Somebody going to say, who made Andrew put him in charge? Somebody going to say, uh, so-and-so think he, he got a God complex. I mean, the 12, they ain't, they ain't never done nothing right. I don't agree with the 10. I don't agree with Thomas. Thomas was doubting the whole time. Now he up there standing. That one right there, his wife uh, 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 don't love him. That one over there, she was a prostitute. She up in here trying to pray. She going to probably, if I go to the bathroom uh, in one of these days, she going to have my man. 120 people for 10 days, you had a whole lot of problems. Don't think they was all up in there kissing and eating chicken dinner. They had some stuff they had to work on. There were some people eyeballing somebody, and everything that goes on in church went on in church. And it took them 10 days to get the mess out. But it took them 10 days to get it out because they were committed. There was 5,000 people that saw Jesus at, at another time. Excuse me, 500 people that saw Jesus at another time. When Jesus was ascended, where did those people go? But when it came time for the Holy Ghost, all of them had something to do. These 120 stuck it out. And they wasn't all kin folks. They didn't all graduate and go to the same school together. They didn't all live in the same town. They didn't all come from the same culture. I mean, they, you know, same culture as in mentality. They were different in some areas. But the one thing they had in common, they wanted to know who Jesus was. They were human beings just like people today. But to get on one accord, we can take 25 people and can't get on one accord. Somebody think that they ought to be the one uh, uh, the in charge. Somebody think, well, they done looked over me. Somebody got a, a enough wind to get five people over here to agree with them. My God, if they'd have had cell phones and text messaging, what kind of damage? It would have took 25 days, maybe 120 days instead of 10 days. But that's our problem today. While we can only get a little bitty power because we got too much. They didn't have television, thank God. But whatever they had, they had to overcome. But the one thing they did, they got on one accord. I know it came out of the fact that somewhere in their heart, they had a desire to know Jesus. They had greater desire to know Jesus than getting on one accord. You see, we're not always going to get on one accord right away. But if we want to know Jesus, it supersedes you and I, him and them, them wherever they are, and the confusion that comes so that Jesus' mission is greater than our differences. See, the dip, what they knew is that the Holy Ghost was coming for God's will to be done. There, the, the plan wasn't to stay in the upper room. It wasn't going to be an upper room, 120 members. The plan wasn't, we got 120 people in this church. Let's see if we can keep 120. Then next week we got 119. Then the next week we got 110. 
Then 20 left because they didn't like something. Then 15 left because they, they, they wanted to go with this person. Then they down to 50. Then they down to 20. Then, then 12, they got their opinion, and then here we go. The plan was that get on one accord, get full of the Holy Ghost. They were people just like you and me. They had husbands. They had wives. They were single. They had two kids. They had one kid. They had grandkids. They had no kids. They, they, they was just like you and me. It was 120 men and women. But the one thing that superseded everything, they wanted to be filled with the Spirit to do His will. And the will wasn't to be in the upper room when Jesus came. Sitting there trying to make that 120 work. And chopping it up every time two and three left. Still sitting there. You know, three left, five ain't there no more. Because there were 500 that saw Jesus, Jesus ascend over in Luke. And they could have sat there and say, 380 ain't with us no more. We must be stupid if all of them 380. And what about the 5,000 that came in and got all them groceries? Five thousand people came in and got all them groceries. 